Good afternoon guys, ladies and gentlemen, and whoever else. Um, yeah, just uh, doing a bit of a rig rundown on my own personal rig. On my uh, 2001 GU ZD30 per trial. Um, yeah, got a fair few views on my last one from mate Pete, so yeah, I thought I'd just give you a quick run around on uh, what my car's got. Um, yeah, where I bought it and mods I've done and yeah, just all things like that. Cool. Alright guys, I'll give you a quick run around of my car. I'll start from the front and run my way around the back. Just tyres, uh, lift, bull bar, winch, just all that sort of bits and pieces. Here we go. Okay, just starting from the front, it's got the uh, standard uh, uh, um, aluminium bar that comes with the uh, GU Patrol. It's just a factory fitted one. Um, when I originally uh, bought it, it had the uh, Light Force XGT lights already fitted. And also had a winch already fitted. All I've done is just added a bit of extra stuff around the side, stopping from cutting, and that's on a winch cradle. So, yep. Um, also added some rated recovery points just to replace the factory ones. And also replace the uh, factory lights because they're only halogen and they uh, flogged out. So I put some eBay LED ones in. They work perfectly. Yeah, as I said, I've got an extra couple of little trail plug things with and some plugs directly to the um, go directly to the batteries that's where I plug my solar in to plug the batteries uh, independently of the DC DC chargers um, also got a, uh, a fold down mount for my uh, for my second uh, UHF radio which is just running an ICOM 450C uh, good little radio I'll show you that when we go inside and got a mount here where my sand flag goes for when I go down robe and those sort of beach places and run around to the other side. Another little thing that goes to the battery. I can run directly, I can run my compressor off it so I don't have to pop the bonnet, and it works pretty well. And with tyres, at the moment I did have BF Goodridge KO2s on there, but they, um, yeah, just worn out from, just from age. So I end up uh, just fitted, they're just cheap Chinese tyres, but they seem to be doing pretty well for now. But next set I'll probably get myself a Coopers or something. And also I added, a set of these uh, brush rails which I bought off Facebook Marketplace for 400 bucks. Yeah, they just go hit with extra protection. You go to a uh, rock slider which is chassis mounted in three different points. Come along, yeah, got the old anybody knows anything about Nissan G Patrols will understand the sticker being a ZD30. Bit of a laugh. Um, yeah, and uh, also got a uh, rear bar, just a, just a rock armour one. Had that fitted before I went to Cape, Cape York. Um, yeah, just for carrying two spares because I'm doing a lot of desert travelling, so made sense to carry two spares. And on the rear arm mount, I got my HF radio mount it's for the Flying Doctor radio, which is on the VKS 737 network that monitors it. So, uh, yeah, ground, two spares. Yeah, that's the BF Goodridge all terrains, KOs. One's a good spare. Same as there, it's got a nuts about four drive bag, they're great because I can put my max tracks in them as well because they fit through the hole. Um, yeah, not really much else going on down here, just an extended tow hitch due to the rear bar coming out so I can tow my camper trailer and my normal trailers. Um, uh, I've got a set of uh, airbags fitted as well. But we see, just, I, don't know, I probably can't really see, but if they've got a set of airbags fitted just to help with towing and keep it level. Um, yeah, just another answer plug to power the DC DC charger in the camper trailer. It's just standard seven pin plug and yeah, nothing real special back here. Okay, around the other side, same. Uh, I'm also running a 30 second awning, a 270 degree awning, which uh, yeah, gives you a great amount of shade and is good for a fair bit of wind. Uh, take it around to the other side. Obviously got my rod holders on the roof rack, not really made for it, but they suit and are great for when I go yard through and beach fishing and stuff. And got my full time camera which comes on when I turn the car on, so I, due to the drawers and that in the back I can't see, so that way it gives it great for keeping an eye out for kitties and other cars behind me. And I've got a kick ass outback shower shower tent thing which I also use for a portable toilet when I go with the missus. Uh, it's a pair of shovel holders that I, that I made. Shovel just fits in there nicely. Uh, there's the other GME 2.1 decibel aerial for my uh, XRS uh, 330 unit. And just, yeah. And other rod holder up top, 
a couple of max track holders and a 200 watt solar panel which powers my rear lithium battery uh, for when I'm not running the car, just keep it charged. And it's just the mounts and also you've got a uh, cheap King's light bar on the front which helps fill in the gaps where the spotties don't. So yeah, that's basically it for the outside. Alrighty, yeah, just pop the bonnet, give you a few of the mods I've done uh, to help the uh, car run a little bit better and keep an eye on the engine monitoring mods. Uh, first of all, got a uh, Provent 200 catch can, that's the must for a turbo diesel to help keep the soot from the inlet manifold. Uh, Telex and uh, needle valve, and that's just for keeping an eye on the boost because the factory boost on the thing has a habit of over boosting and can damage the motors. So that just controls my spool rate and how much boost I've got. Um, yeah, and I fitted it, can't really see it, but I've got an eBay aftermarket ear intercooler in there because the old factory one let it go and just started leaking. I'm um, also running a Red Arc 12, 1220 uh, DC DC charger just for. That's my spare auxiliary battery, which I don't really use much now because I've got a lithium in the back, which I'll show you later. Um, yeah, it's fitted in, uh, running a three inch uh, stainless steel right through exhaust from the dump pipe down, just to let them breathe a bit better. So yeah, so get the EGTs down, which are running the EGT Red Arc EGT gauge. Okay, around to this side. Probably the big mod in here was the uh, lithium starter battery from an iTech Wheel 420. Um, just yeah, just to get it help cranking a little bit better. And also that's the housing for the uh, Red Arc uh, gauge, which I use for uh, monitoring my water temps. Um, also that's my controller inlet there, which I use for my, um, uh, which I use for the winch. Uh, it's got a wired and wireless controller. Here's another look, uh, the iTech wheel battery. Yeah, and that there, and yeah, I've got a few spotty relays, just the usual actual mods and bits and pieces under the thing and she doesn't get too hot she runs beautifully okay start for the interior and probably the first mod I had done on this thing was uh, getting uh, my Ford my old uh, Nissan seats just flogged out and weren't very good so I ended up buying a second hand XR6 seats uh, on a hurricane fabrication adapter which has all been mod plated so it's all legal and above board so yeah a lot more comfortable and a lot more lumber support and longer trips Okay, if we're getting into here also, turn that on. Uh, I was running my gauges here. I'm uh, just running right there and running a uh, Red Arc, Red Arc uh, remote monitor gauges for all my batteries. I run up to 16 batteries off it, all RF frequency, so I'm keeping an eye on batteries in the camper trailer as well. And underneath that, I'm just running a tyre dog uh, pressure monitor to keep an eye on my tyre pressures. It was a good thing. And then the, the first gauge there, is the uh, Red Arc 3-in-1 uh, gauge, it does a water temp EGTs and also on a boost gauge. Underneath that I'm running the Speco oil pressure gauge just for keeping things, on things. Um, yep, on the dash here running a, a scan gauge, or it's called an ECU torque, especially for the G1 GU patrols because they're not OB2 compliant. So, um, so yeah, it just runs that, keeps on all my, uh, all my temps, uh, boost readings, yeah, just everything to do with the motor because these things have a habit of uh, they can't blow up. So I'll drive within that, and so far, the motor's been good. And yeah, it's running, uh, it's got me Chinese GPS that I use with my own mods. Uh, I've got two speakers up there one for the HF radio, which is this big beast here. That's my HF radio, it's just a Barrett. Um, yeah, and that's the handpiece because it's a remote mount for my Icom IC uh, 450 radio. And start the show up here, I'm running a uh, XR6, I mean, um, XRS uh, 330 unit. That's the head unit there, and it's just the outback roof console where I keep my maps and bits and pieces in. Oh, uh, yeah. And onto that age, that's my full time camera. And I've got another camera underneath it, which is just for my reversing camera, so I can reverse, so I can hook the straight on. Uh, yeah, that's about it for the front, take it to the back. Yeah, no real mods done in the back, except for obviously LED lights up in there. Uh, I'm also running a, uh, a Renogy. Uh, probably, probably a bit hard to see, but that just keeps an eye on my battery. Uh, how much power I'm using, how much is going into it. Yeah, it's running for a shunt, so yeah, it works really, really well, so yeah. Okay, running from the back. Um, got a set of drawers here, which are already in the car when I bought them, and my data's just added carpet to them to make it look a little bit neater. Um, 
start the right here, a little cargo barrier thing I made with a 1500 watt inverter for running the induction cooker and small 12 volt appliances with a 150 amp resettable fuse breaker with quite heavy duty wiring. Um, then yeah, and then next I mounted the travel buddy which I've had since 2014, it's brilliant. The only problem is that when you're driving on trips you can smell the food cooking and it makes you want to eat. But, oh. Okay, in the back's where I mounted my DC DC charger. Just run out red art 1250D and with a fuse panel just for a King's box. Um, that's the control unit there for my HF radio. Um, yeah, obviously fire extinguisher. Uh, it's running the ever 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 cool fridge. Got a little drawer that slides out, so that's why it's quite nifty, it's easy to get at. Don't have to have a drop-down fridge slide. Yeah, just like that. Nice and easy. And on this side it's got a just a 20 litre water tank that's uh, gravity fed just for washing your hands and little bits and pieces. Um, various bits and pieces of spares in there. Um, obviously here's where I keep my iTech World 120 amp X lithium battery. Um, yeah, that runs everything nicely. 120 amps, plenty for what I need, so. And into this drawer. Basically just running all my tools, recovery equipment, uh, compressor, just all that sort of knickknacks and recovery rings and all the sort of stuff and a few spares, belts and belts and the like. And then my next draw, I'm just running all my lateral gear, first aid kit. Um, also got a 120 watt solar panel on there, just a blanket and a Victron chargers. They just work a lot better than the standard ones, so yep, that's it. Uh, into this drawer, just keep a lot of my cooking gear, knives, forks, appliances, tea, coffee, paper towel, just all bits and paraphernalia for when I'm out on the road. And also running uh, the drop down table in the back in the back here, which is absolutely brilliant. From Patrol Australia and the bottom folds out, which I'll uh, do a pick in a second and show you. So yeah, here's the uh, table folded out, gives you an enormous amount of room. Uh, when you want to cook, when we haven't got the camper trailer, just so you've got more bench space, put the gas cooker up there and meal prep there, and yeah, and it all folds up to a nice neat package in the door. Um, also, Ella, just a little LED light. It's only small, but it's more than enough to light up the area for cooking. So, yeah, we'll switch there, and all works pretty good. That's about it, guys, for rig rundown. I'll probably just show you the awning, and, uh, and that's about it, I guess, with most of the features on the car, and yeah. It's been a, so far, I've had it five years, it's been very, very reliable, so you know, a bit of preventative maintenance on it too. All good. There you go, guys, I'll just run you through quickly how easy it is to put up the awning. We do have a bit of breeze around today, so I'll give you a good idea to have a look at it. And that's basically it, so yeah, takes absolutely bugger all to put up. Uh, it does come with a couple of support poles. One, if you want to use it, to brought it down, but winds like today, you'd be okay. Cool, just thought I'd give you a quick, and the pack up's just as easy too.
Okay, guys, that concludes our video today for my quick rig runaround. Um, yeah, a couple of things I did forget to mention. I've also, uh, it does have a uh, two inch lift, which is the old man emu. It was in the car when I bought it, it's done me well, so I haven't bothered changing it. Um, also, I did get the ECU remapped through border engineering, which gives a bit more poke and a bit better fuel economy. And yeah, EGTs are all good, so yeah. If you have any comments or questions, just leave them down in the comments and I will reply to all of them as much as I can. Thanks guys. Right, bye.